Are you making this crucial, huge mistake as a salesperson? Stay tuned. What's up everybody, this is BC. Welcome back to another video. Now, I'm gonna take a step back and do another sales video. Now this has all to do with sales persuasion. I label it sales, however, um, you can even deduce this all the way down to day-to-day -to -day interactions and you can spot the mistake here, um, especially when we talk the dating world, okay? Um, now I see this mistake still happening all the time and it'll become very clear to you and I'm gonna give you some solutions near the middle or end of the video to help you, okay? This is what I'm talking about. One of the biggest mistakes, this is a huge mistake and I still see even, not just beginners, but even in intermediate and some almost advanced people still doing it. There's like this huge battle when it comes to um, objections, right? So let, let's say the subject of objections comes up it, there's almost like this avoidance behavior, right? Or this subtle insecurity that the salesperson has about something. And now it pollutes and poisons their sales process, meaning maybe they're afraid, for example, of the lack of time in their business. Um, maybe they're not sure about something about their product. Maybe they just don't believe in themselves. There's some underlying issue in them, okay? So now when they speak to somebody, the way it manifests is they steer them down a conversation a certain way and they wanna avoid that subject matter regarding their insecurity, right? Or um, they do whatever it takes to avoid answering certain questions, if, if that makes sense, and they deflect it. So basically what I'm saying is it, it could start with a thought and yet it seeps all the way through their process and it, it's really just an insecurity when it comes to objections and it's the wrong, we can say, viewpoint on objections. I, I still see objections as, for most people, this huge mountain that they have to climb, when really, the first understanding you need to have is, it's going to be a part of the process, right? Because just like you get acceptance from them, like, okay, we're ready to move forward, the moment you enter the dynamic of sales, you've already agreed to yourself and to the universe that the possibility of acceptance and rejection is there, meaning, they can throw an objection and not work with me and question it, or they can move forward with me. Both possibilities are already there. So you have to understand that as a salesperson when you step into this field, or when you go out and you talk to people. That's the first understanding you need to have. What I just described in the beginning is people who only want yes and to move forward and all the positive, and they wanna sweep all the negative, quote, possibilities under the rug. You can't do that. You cannot have one without the other, okay? Understand this, that understanding alone will bring a different comfort and poise into you entering a social interaction or sales. Both possibilities are always there and you have to know that, okay? So when it comes to the stuff with objections, aside from you know more practice and that kind of stuff, I can give you guys some tips when it comes to this because you know it's really not that complicated, okay? What you need to do is be more of a strategist and practitioner of this art form and look at it that way. So if I know, hey, I'm gonna have issues with this objection or that objection, or I'm gonna have some sort of problem, why not in my dialogues when I talk to people, either without mentioning it, handle it and start addressing that objection to inform them, to educate them, to bring light and a different perspective to that objection, right? You can do that or you can address it directly and be like, was one of your concerns blank? Let's say I'm super, um, we can say insecure or worried about somebody bringing up my experience in my field or handling my particular product, right? Let's say I'm super scared about that. I'm gonna bring that up first before they do. Be like, hey, you know, a, a, common, a common thread that I hear or a common suggestion or a common question I hear, right? And by saying it's common, you're letting them know that other people do it. So typically when you provide social proof with your speech, it's more readily accepted, right? And looked at from a different light. You know, a, a common question people ask is about, you know, the experience. They want to make sure they have somebody who's super experienced. Is that a concern of yours? Now, let's say they did have a concern about it, but they didn't want to tell you. Now they're going to voice it and be like, well, yeah, we want to make sure the person who we're working with, um, you know, is, is totally qualified. Well, we have nothing to worry about. My company, and I can go and give a brief one or two line explanation <clears throat> highlighting 
some of the things and you can say it however you want. Let's say your company's been in business 30 years. Let's say you're new, but your company's been in the business 30 years. Well, you know, I work with a company who's been in the business 30 years, so you're definitely in good hands. Now, this is the key. From there, I transition into the next question or the next flow. I don't just sit there and linger on it, which is what most salespeople do. They'll say that and then they'll shut up. The prospect or the person doesn't know where to take it. You have to be in control, okay? Another thing to do is, again, just in your process say, okay, what are typical objections that people are saying or that they will bring up that maybe I'm scared of or that I know is common in their, in their thought process and let me add it into my dialogues, okay? And that's simple. So if you know that typically <clears throat> people have an objection with your a service or your product in regards to price, start adding in some value tips, you know? <clears throat> say <clears throat> stuff like this. You know what? We've been um, in the business about 30 years and we've been uh, fortunate enough to accumulate a 99% satisfaction rate, which is unheard of in this industry because typically our other competitors have about 90% and line, right? So I, I let them know the average is 90. And again, I'm just making these numbers up, but you can kind of do this based on the information that you have in the industry that you're in. But that tells them, oh shit, okay, they have a 9% higher satisfaction rate, Okay. That's at least a little tidbit that's logical that I can throw in there. Because again, this is the key when it comes to this stuff and the way that I'm structuring it. When you project these insecurities on them, you're hinting at something that they're not going to be able to put their finger on, but they're inside going to feel it and say something doesn't feel right. Because whatever it is that, that you are insecure about, you will project to them, whether it's manifestation in your facial expressions, your eyes, your words, your voice, <clears throat> your body language, something will communicate that insecurity for sure. People pick up on it, it's an energy, it's a vibe, okay? Now on the flip side, if you start doing what I'm telling you, right, you're gonna be more confident for sure, but at the same time, when the person is maybe for a moment unsure and they wanna justify maybe an emotion that they're feeling to move forward with you, which is a good emotion, like I'm considering working with them, that next step in their mind is to logically try to come to some justification to support either decision. We know this, it's basic sales. So now, when I give these little tidbits, like I just gave that 99% versus 90, that's something they can hold on to and legitimize their decision and say, oh, oh, well 99, uh, okay, this makes sense. Now they're gonna be more likely to move forward, okay? But it's that simple. We just simply have to come from a position of, Hey, we're playing chess here. I'm just moving the pieces. And, and the main thing you can take from this video is I'm not going to sit back and hide and pretend to sweep under the rug my objections. I'm going to put them in the forefront because somebody who's really insecure and scared of something, are they going to say that to a customer or bring it to light? What I just told you is very powerful about you bringing it up first. That demonstrates that you're not afraid. That's like when the lions are out hunting and you know, they see the deer in the distance and there's the one or two deer that are like jumping around, kind of showing off like, hey, you know, I have a lot of energy, you can't get me. They don't go after that deer. Why is that? Do you ever see them go after the deer that jumps? No, they're looking for the weak one. By you hiding, you're the weak one trying to hide behind somebody, but when you bring it up to light or you're handling these things in your dialogues without directly addressing them, either one works. You're that deer that's jumping around saying, I'm strong, I'm fit, I'm fast, come and get me. They're not gonna challenge that. It's when you start demonstrating weakness, hesitancy, and all these other bad things that they're gonna challenge it, okay? Now, of course, there's a million ways to go deeper with this, but this is simply a reframe in your perspective when it comes to objections and take and face objections head on when it comes to this. Stop trying to hide or steer the conversation or bullshit people, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So whether you decide to bring it up yourself, like, hey, is that a concern? Typically people say blah, blah, blah. Or you're now going to input certain information into your dialogues, use both of them. We do it all the time. But this way, your sales process is smoother. You're being more strategic, right? And at the end of the day, you're making the customer happier because you're addressing concerns that are probably gonna come up anyway. But again, this takes practice, this takes time, and this takes a lot of energy and focus to deliver properly, because again, none of this is good unless you have a really razor sharp delivery, which takes time to hone and to perfect.
okay? But I recommend that you shift your perspective when it comes to objections and some of these other things because it allows you to enter social interactions in the sales world with a little bit more poise and a little bit more confidence. And ultimately, that's what people buy. We know people buy emotionally and justify logically. So when you're doing these things right, you're handling the emotional side, but you have the little logical tidbits there to help them justify in their mind that, hey, this is the right decision. Okay, just a few thoughts that I wanted to share with you in regards to objections and I think some of the issues that people are having. Again, whenever you have some of these things come up in your mind, make sure that you tackle them head on and that you don't now create this whole process to avoid that thing because now you're just doing yourself <clears throat> a disservice and you're doing them a disservice for sure. Okay. So with that said, that's it for this video. Make sure you guys leave a like, uh, leave a comment below if this helped you out or if you would like to see any other videos in regards to this subject matter. Two quick announcements. Number one, Supreme Being, my podcast. The link is in the description. Make sure you follow it. We do two new episodes every single week. And lastly, if you really want to know stuff like this um, and you want me to go much deeper and be much more thorough, then jump on Modern Success, which is my personal coaching and mentorship program for the world. Uh, shout out to our three newest members who joined yesterday. I congratulate every single one of you. Um, the movement is growing very, very quickly. I highly recommend all of you get on. It's on my website, which is in the description below. See you there. Peace.